Hey everybody, me and Crazy Katie is out here right now on my RV. This is my bug out camper and I'm going to show you details. Look down at the bottom of my video down where I post like the pinned comment or the info below whatever ads or crap they put on my video. You're going to see a link to this thing. This is generation three. It's the better power brights. It's the Sam Lex part one. And over here, you're going to see these things. And I'm going to put a link down there because I know everybody that sees these are like, where the hell you get them, man? And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you where I get them at. These are huge. Look at that. That's a five and a half inch crescent. And look at these things. 330 amps. I'll explain more in the video as we go. Um, this is going to be a full power test of everything that runs on this RV, including a TV and some other things. The con converter, that kind of stuff. So watch. You're going to see what it's doing. And right now, this is running the whole system, but I'm going to show you how it started. Let's go. I'm doing a power systems test right now on the bug out camper. And Emma's in there doing her thing. So I am setting this up. And we've got the sewer reroute manifold made for that. And back here is the heater reroute that has been done. So you guys keeping an eye on this camper, you can see it's got, and look at all my junk in the background. It's got a framed out for the windows here and here. And we're just now starting to work this side where the door will go here. And there will be this thing here. So we're going to be putting in this little slider or fan fold thing that will be the part of the back door. So this is all going to be insulated. The floor, of course, built on top of here and insulated. And it's already insulated with two inches of foam below this. And I used the treated wood back here because, one, I got it for almost nothing. Um, it was a bunch of cutoffs for 18-foot pieces. And I have framed this all in. It's going to be the same height as the floor there. So here's the power system. This is the Bug Out Trailer's power system. Right now, I've turned the refrigerator all the way up so that it's running. So I have the refrigerator in there running. This is 150 watts right now that is running the refrigerator. It is running the converter, which in my case, when the batteries are put in here, the converter won't have to run. So don't, don't make that mistake of thinking I have to run this off the inverter. I do not. The batteries will run everything instead of this. It switches itself off. So, and there's the heater. It's been boxed in, it's still got to be finished. It's got a few things left to do to it. And this has to be, I have to make a new one of these basically that'll be mounted out here flush. And that's for the heater's exhaust. It is a fully welded uh, exhaust tube with offset. And, and, there's, and the rest of this is the fresh air intake. So let's get back to what we've got over here, okay? Um, over here, other than some new batteries, I'm looking for a video on that. I'm going to show you a video. I tested about 12 of those batteries. I finally found a good set, good brand. So here's the setup. Those are the batteries. This is the old jump links that I made years ago. This is out of two aught cable, and that's how they're going to be put together. But I'm going to cut it and make them with new terminals. Um, you pull from this end for the positive, and you pull from this end for the negative. So as you see here, there's the cable going to the inverter there. And the cable is just two gauge. It's not too odd, it's two gauge. And it's over there hooked up to that. So all of that'll shorten. And we're going to be using these terminals. So y'all want to see how big these monsters are. These are good for 330 amps. They're advertised as 300, but if you do the calculations on the post itself, they're 330 capacity. So in their 74% copper, and the rest of it's brass and tin uh, antimony or whatever they call it. So I'm going to put you a link. If you want to see these, you won't buy these. These are freaking awesome for making like uh, going through the wall, your pickup, or through your camper, or through your battery box for hooking stuff up. Man, these kick ass. They work great. So um, look down there at the bottom of where my posts are, my pin post or whatever, and I'm going to put you a link to those. And I'll put a link to that power bright too if you want. There you go. If you want to check that out. So... The power by just 2200 watts. The first generation, um, there's a guy, Newell Girl, did, did a video on the first generation ones, and they had problems. This is generation three. So this is a 2016 or 17, I think it's uh, manufactured in November of 16, so fairly new. I've had it in my semi truck, runs a 
uh, what is it, a 900 watt microwave without a buzz, without noise, nothing. It's clean power. So we're running at 150 watts. Now, I'm going to have my oldest daughter turn on the air conditioner now, and we'll show you how the wattage jumps. All right, so you had that 150, and that's the surge of the air conditioner. It jumped up to 5, let's see, at 536, 546. The refrigerator is set all the way to the coldest setting, so it's going to run as long as we're doing this test. It's, it takes a while to get to that. And then it's going to settle down. Now, you got to remember now, I've got an air conditioner running, a converter, and that little refrigerator, that little uh, Galan's refrigerator, and all the lights, the whole trailer's lit up in there. All the lights are running on it. So I've got that going, and I'm pulling a grand total to run everything on this trailer, including the power converter, which pulls about 45 watts itself to run those uh, LED lights, 45 to 50 watts. And this is what we got. So we're running about 450 to 500 watts of power. Now, here's the cool part. Over here is 800 watts of solar. So we got 800 watts of solar, two MPPT 40 amp controllers that'll be on here, 800 watts of solar. These panels, look down there, I'll put you a link. Every one of them tested out within spec plus. The lowest I had was 102 watts, the highest I had was 109. So they perform, and they're four bus bar. So they really absorb the, elect the electricity, really absorb the light, even if they're laying flat because of the four bus bar. You see the ones with the two or the three, you need to angle them more towards the sun. But being that there's four, it helps a lot in collecting at a flat angle. So 800 watts of solar, 2200 watt inverter, four large batteries at 109 amps a piece. These are the Everstarts. So if you ever wanted to know, um, these are the uh, Exide designed or built Exide battery. And you'll notice it by the pattern on the side. They're not smooth sided like a regular Johnson Control Walmart battery. So they're Champion Exide Napa battery. These, however, are setting right now at 12.9 volts. They just set there, static voltage. They're brand new, six of 18 like this video is. We're gonna hook up this inverter. Now, remind yourself that these batteries will have incoming solar for that air conditioner to run. So the air conditioner is still running right now. In fact, Tori just turned on, Tori just turned on the television back there, so it just jumped up about another 25 watts. So like I said, 500 watts, and that's gonna drop a little bit or jump up a little bit. She's changing channels, isn't that funny? So we're at a 500 watt average, and we're going to pull, and that's gonna power this whole thing, guys, this whole thing. And you wanna take a better look here. It's coming out pretty damn nice. We're getting all of it done. We've got the plastic fender guards, all that stuff going on. The windows have been pulled. They're being cleaned. They're going to be a light almond to go with this camo brown color. And all this is all structurally framed so that it makes it all stronger in the back and supports more weight, can handle more torque going over more areas. Of course, the axles were designed where they'll roll down and lift this thing up seven inches on the hydraulics. Um, and the hydraulic rod has been installed in the belly, so now it actuator actually jacks the axles. So we have that in there, and I'll do a video later on that. Um, this 2200 watt inverter. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and kill the power that's coming in here. And let me see, I'll probably pull it from here. I'll just kill it here. We're going to kill the power, and so this is a 15 amp. It's not going to pull over that now, and I'll unplug this, and we'll move it over. All right, so now you can see there's the cord. And this is my heavy-duty tool extension cords, and it goes up to where there's going to be a twist lock coming through when the siding gets put on. And we're going to plug this thing in down here, and it's powered up. And we're going to plug this thing in down here, and we're going to run this whole trailer on this. I'll show you the voltage drop. Give it a few seconds here. There we go. And now we'll power it up. You hear that click? <laughs> That's the converter clicking on, refrigerator back on, and get over here right quick. You can hear the compressor running. And the air conditioner right there. Right. Okay? 
you can hear that compressor running in there. There's no games being played there. See that fan blowing? All right, so we got the air conditioner running, and that's that one in the other videos. Go back and look at it. Very low wattage. 4,850 BTUs, actual. So hooked up, and we are drawing. We have 115 volts, very stable. And our wattage is at 525, 518, because it just all kicked back on. Okay, and our batteries, now you got to remember, 12.45, 12.33, 12.41, little bounce around there. Now you got to remember, when the air conditioner will be used, we will also at the same time be having 800 watts of solar coming in to feed this whole thing now. So, she has plugged in another item back there. She's back there messing around. So, it's, the converter is now pulling higher amperage. But we have 600 watts, 800 to go on the roof. Here's the big part. This will not be pulling nearly 100 watts to run to power the lights. That's out of the equation. That's 5 amps or 6 or 7 amps, whatever. It's out of the equation. The batteries will only be pulling DC voltage for all those purposes. The refrigerator back here, which we are framing off and closing off because it's going to be an electric. 58 watts of running power, man. The, the, the one that was in it quit on me after a week of running, the big one. But it pulled 195 watts to run on the electric. No point. And as far as propane, we would rather use the solar to go electric and have the same square inches or footage. And one of the benefits other than Katie chasing me around, is that the batteries will have constant incoming voltage when you need to run the air conditioner, which is in the summertime. So we're right now putting out 6 620 watts. Uh, what are you running back there? Air conditioner and two fans? Okay. So we've got 12.35 12 volts in the batteries, and, it's, and they're holding. I mean, this is holding putting out 622 watts. You look at how big this thing is. This is a 21 foot long vehicle that's got a bedroom in the front, a kind of quasi living room sun porch in the back that's screened. There's the windows that'll be going in it. They're nice, gonna be painted. And as far as running the power system on this thing, this is the generator. See, it's right there, gen. This is park power. I can move this one from here to here and run on the 2,000 watt dual fuel generator that's going to be on the nose, or this, which is the inverter. So there's a 10 gauge wire coming here to power this. We can plug it into the inverter, which will be mounted underneath the refrigerator on the back of the battery box. Nice area, lots of airflow, and I'm going to be mounting cooling fans inside the box to just circulate the air based on a thermal conductivity switch, a thermal switch, click switch. That's my setup. That's the test. It's currently pulling 634 watts. I can turn off the converter and you'll see the drop. It's still steady. Look at that. There's no power coming in, man. These batteries are holding it just on their own. No solar at all. 12.34. That's tough ass batteries. And if I unplug this, up here, you will see an immediate drop. So it was pulling about, I don't know, 65 watts, 70 watts, and the batteries still steady. So go ahead and turn the air conditioner off. I'm, hopefully you heard that turn off there, and the voltage returns. Look at it on its own, just coming on up. After all that load, all that time, and with this refrigerator running and the few 110 volt lights that are in there, and that's just a 40 watt regular incandescent bulb. So 40 watts and then the refrigerator, um, and I think uh, uh, the TV is pulling 104 watts. So those are things that will run all the time. So 104 watts, 800 watts of solar, and a battery bank that'll probably never really drop. So I can run all night at 104 with it pulling about, what would that be? 
seven or eight amps off the batteries, that many batteries, 109 amps a piece times four, so 436 amps, amp hours on this, which is high efficiency. I think we're doing good. TV is um, just a small 24-inch, uh, and the car stereo that goes in there is that little pyramid, so it only pulls two amps. The whole thing, the idea is to build this thing with efficiency in mind from the beginning, even the heater unit that's in there, the old can style, with all the extra insulation we've done, extra wiring and stuff, this whole trailer can run off of that. And I've got an, another outdoor outlet that'll come off of that too. And the battery bank, we're looking good. So there's your review, there's your hookup, there's how it's gonna be set up. That is the power supply for the bug out camper. And if you go look at my previous video, you will see this piece of garbage and why it's not on there. And that power bright for my semi truck, my durable butt kicker will be put into this RV now permanently. All right, guys, y'all stay tuned. We're still doing some work and we're almost done with it.